What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the altar again, and this time we got round three with Mixie of Stitched Up Heart. Great to be able to talk with you. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me again. It's always good to talk with you. Yeah, it's always great to talk with you, too. I interviewed the drummer of Steel Panther uh, before, and I think he has that same chair as you. So. Yes, yes. Uh, Monster Energy. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they passed out these chairs like in the pandemic. We were all... Uh, we all turned into streamers and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Michael Starr has one as well. Sticks, Michael, mm-hmm. all those guys. Our bass player, our guitar player, everybody has a chair. Yeah. Even even in the age where there was no shows or no, like, concerts or festivals, that Monster Energy Drink logo still made its way around the world of metal. So Yes, and you know what? Like, they have been nothing. I mean, we, we're going on, I think, almost eight years with Monster. And honestly we couldn't do it without them we would be touring in our drummers broken down 350,000 mile van if it wasn't for monster um the dog just went to the bathroom in the corner so i just (laughs) wanted to know that there is a potty pad over there but i just tried to crop it out of the video here it's all good since we're talking about the new single to the wolves this couldn't be more appropriate you got the wolves in the background so I have to like tiny little wolves. They may or may not have been a little bit of the inspiration for the concept. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I really did want to get kind of uh, fierce. And, you know, the last record we wrote was very introspective and the soft parts and the insecure parts of us. I mean, all humans kind of have a lot of similar uh, feelings and emotions and stuff. But this one was more about the angry, like, just out for blood kind of parts of us, you know, the kinds that's just like gonna fight for whatever, you know, and I've got a lot of that. (laughs) Well, you led me perfectly into what I wanted to talk about because I think with everything from, you know, Never Alone to, you know, Darkness to now, I think everything, and even back in the day when I would listen to, uh, is this the way you get to hell? Like, I think everything was conveying so much emotion. But first and foremost, is this single, which features Craig Mabbitt as well, is that maybe a good representation of what like the full length follow up to Darkness will sound like? Or is that just one little taste of what's to come? Oh yeah. Um, See, there was a lot of things with Darkness that we loved. We really threw some paint on that album. We wrote 70 songs for it, but we weren't as clear as we were with this record on what we wanted the vision to be. Um, And it wasn't until doing that album that we knew the next like thing that we needed to do. We needed, I missed, I missed more of the guitar riffs. I missed like, there were riffs and stuff in darkness, but I wanted more of that. And I wanted more breakdowns and I wanted more screaming. Um, And I went through a lot with my vocals uh, before we wrote darkness. So I was very, very hesitant on, um, pushing it to the limit with screaming. Uh, and now I guess I've gained a little more confidence in my screams. I've been working on them and trying to do them properly. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it got, we just wanted to have some fun with it. We stopped playing it safe and yeah, uh, to the wolves is a very good segue from darkness into this record, but there's going to be a lot of things that we've never tried before on this album, the heaviest song we've ever written. And I know everybody says, oh, it's heavier. I mean, but it is. <laughs> that's, such a, some, that's such a subjective way to describe something. Like I've, I've had people ask me, like when people, you know, I'm a huge fan of like death metal and black metal. And like when I would introduce it, people have asked me, oh, is the music you listen to heavy like Creed? They would think Creed is like devil music. So like... <laughs> You know, it's kind of strange. We've been living in this world where there are these tiny little bubbles. Like there's bands that I think are the biggest bands. They're selling out arenas and things like uh, stadiums. And and people don't know who they are. And it's like, we think, cause we're in this little bubble of like, you know, the death metals, the black metal, the everything metal, the alt rock, the, you know, all of that stuff. Um, the everything but rock. Yeah. I like, I like to call our genre everything but metal <laughs> oh. <laughs> i um, think i think your genre ca- captures a lot of spectrum and you know darkness which i thought was a fantastic album i think really the vibes that was behind it first of all to have that album during lockdown i think a track like warrior was definitely the 
uh, motivational track that we needed at that time. And I think a song like Dirty Secrets really captured just so much of the pain and uh, darkness, pun intended, that we were feeling at that time. And Straight Jacket had a catchy element behind it. Like, I love that line, your heart needs a straight jacket or something like that, because there was a lot of people who could have used that back at the time. So I think you really are great at demonstrating emotion of all spectrums. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it was a very, uh, everything happens, I feel like, for a reason. And the album titled Darkness came out the day that the world shut down, March 2020. And it was really random. And um, I think we kind of went over this before a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like the songs were just written. It was our sophomore record. Usually that one's the hard one for a band. You come out with the first album and it's just like, oh, we didn't expect to do so well. And then the second album, it's like, and it's okay, you know, but it was, there were some moments in that that were very, very, we did work our butts off on that album. Um, and hopefully it helped people through those dark times and through the pandemic. And it definitely, it definitely helped me. So hopefully it helps if it helped one other person, um, then, then we did our job. Well, I know like, uh, because I don't know if it was the first single, but one of the first singles of Darkness that you released was the collaboration with Sully from Godsmack, and now you're releasing a collaboration with Craig of Escape the Fate, and both great bands, but there's a lot of differences there, and they have many different vocal ranges. So when you collaborate with an artist, and this is a question I like to have when there's two vocalists involved, or do you both kind of need to be in the same headspace or be in the same frame of mind when singing together or writing the lyrics together in a way, or being that you both have different voices, maybe being in your own world is what helps make the song the song yeah you know it was really they're totally two different situations when it came to features um we were very much in the active rock radio rock world and i think this album we're taking it more in the kind of like i don't know i want to say metalcore like the not pop punk because we definitely didn't do that but like what comes after that? Like, you know, and I feel like Escape the Fate, the scene bands, you know, the scene. Remember, like, oh, that's remember. really where our roots came from. Like, our roots were, we were running around. I had, like, raccoon hair. Scene. I was, like, the scene queen of Hollywood. There were so many, like, uh, just, 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 you know, the kids with the hair over the half of the eyes. And I don't know, it just, it took us back to the very beginning of the band when we put it together and what we were trying to create. So this record kind of almost goes backwards and forwards at the same time. So it has a lot of modern elements. It's like what we wished we had created at the beginning um, is kind of what what we got. But the the difference in the artists that we chose for the features definitely um, is the direction we were going for this record, I think, more so. Yeah, and you know what I've noticed is too, that whole scene movement has more of a legacy than I think people realize. Like, take a band like Texas in July, for example. That singer now sings with Era, who's huge. You take I Wrestled the Bear once, that singer's now in Spirit Box. You take Attack Attack, their keyboard player is now the frontman of Beartooth. Woe is me, their singer would go on to form issues. So I think in the end, like, that whole movement really spawned a lot of things. And you know, it's funny is, is this the way you get to hell was the first song that was recommended to me. And it was recommended to me because uh, from iTunes when I was listening to all those scene bands. So it's funny to hear you finally, or not finally, but confess that that was part of your roots in a way. Yeah, I mean, like we weren't, uh, we weren't very big because we started in 2010. Um, so we were just like a baby band compared to a lot of the ones that people knew of. But hopefully, you know, I feel like there's a resurgence always with music. And, you know, if maybe the timing will be right this time and the world won't shut down. But I don't know. I, I'm just I feel like this this album is more who we are than anything else. We didn't play it safe. We didn't try to impress or please anyone. We we knew what we wanted to do from the very beginning. Um, everybody was on the same page and it was just like, I think we maybe wrote 13 songs for this one. Wow. And we used almost every single song. So it was like really cool. We worked with Mitchell Marlowe again, which is also the guy that wrote uh, or that produced Never Alone, him and Sahaj Tikatin. Um, but when we get with Mitch, it's like there is this chemistry that just works. 
Uh-oh. Remember I told you? Like, <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm just trying hard. If, I, if it looks like I'm laughing, I'm, I apologize. The puppy... I'm being serious, man. The puppy, <laughs> the puppy is a puppy, and I don't have a safe place in this house right now. Let me no. show you it. It's totally cool. Wolfie. Little video, Wolfie. <laughs> this is the doggy playroom because, yeah, they are just insane. Come here. This is great marketing. It, like, fits perfectly for what the single that we're talking about. I mean, look how vicious. Oh my God, so brutal. So, he's so scary. <laughs> it's so brutal. I love him so much. But he's six months old, so yes, it, it, it is. Um, there is branding uh, awareness there. <laughs> new, new puppy for the new album, right? Yeah, I needed new dogs for this album. Like, it only made sense. <laughs> That's the stitched up heart mascot. Um, <laughs> for a moment of seriousness, actually, um, because. When I listen to your vocals and your lyric lyricism, I could tell that your lyrics are very emotional and they really do channel a lot of, you know, I think you've always been open about confronting your own demons and your own personal struggles within your lyrics. Um, you know, when I heard Dirty Secrets, it almost made me in a way like concerned in a way. But like when it comes to confronting your own personal uh, demons in your music, it's obviously very cathartic to release that, but does that also maybe make it deteriorating to sort of confront that in a way and almost make the creative process almost traumatic in that regard? Um, I'm gonna grab this one because mm -hmm. he's being butthead. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Uh, well, I mean, it's kind of the only way that I can get all that out. Uh, you know, like I'm, I'm a pretty isolated hermit person. I, I, you know, I need, I think we all need a way to vent and it's kind of, um, my way of honestly, like even looking at my, sometimes I'm, I, I can't be vulnerable even to myself. And when I make, when I write lyrics, things come out that I didn't even know were in there. And, um, I just know that there's probably somebody that can relate to it, you know, like, cause we are all human beings and we all have a lot of, like I said, the similar stuff. So, uh, I just am trying to be honest with everything. Um, and yeah, that we all have demons. And I think that's the fun part about this next album is because I was embracing the demons to a point where it was like, not the evil, but the, you know, the, the vicious, the, uh, I don't know, the troublemakers, the, the the stuff that we don't talk about, like, or we always try to look like we're like all good people and we're all just angels, but that's not the truth. Some of us are assholes and <laughs> we can all kind of be assholes sometimes, you know? Um, and that's kind of like the embracing the, the ferociousness. Um, but uh I just think of it as like a therapeutic kind of thing where for me um, and it's expressing my art in words and melodies, I guess. Well, because sometimes when like the emotion and like uh, turmoil is sometimes like the fuel to the fire, I've always said that sometimes an artist can become victims of their own product in that regard. This is adorable. This is my favorite interview I've done this year. Like this beat Billy Valo for me. So I just want to say that. Well, until he starts barking at the other one and gets in a fight, then, you know, he's trying to assert his dominance and show her that he's the leader of the pack, but he's the baby. Mm -hmm. So he's growing. And um, yes, but uh, it doesn't hurt again. Um, it used to. Uh, but I think I've become more uh, accustomed to it being like a therapeutic thing than a uh, pain that you have to feel over and again you can't hurt yourself like that again the same exact way by just talking about it you actually kind of let it set it free and let go of the power it has over you you know yeah um like in dead roses i didn't want to i didn't want to do that song from darkness um because i don't really like writing about exes and i don't want to give them that power to remember that they were a jerk and i don't want them to have a song and uh so, but I did write it because there was domestic violence, uh, physical and mental and gaslighting and all that stuff where I lost myself. And it's actually to this day, I've been working with therapists about this. Um, it's destroyed like who I was. Um, 
because I was gaslit for so long and destroyed for so long that I didn't even think I was worth anything. And I've lived like that and I've talked like that about myself to myself for a very long time. So um, it was, it's something I have to retrain myself for it. And those, those things, writing and singing about it, I don't perform that one live because I don't know, I just don't want to, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, well, I think you, your fans relate to your music in such a profound way. I've spoken to your fans at every every show that I've seen you play at. I've seen Stitch Apart, I think, like seven or eight times. Now, every New York City show that you played since 2016. So, like, I could tell that you've always uh, put your heart and soul into it. And when a fan resonates with your material, do you think that adds another layer of meaning to the uh, material as well? Oh, absolutely. It, it takes the power back when somebody can heal from it of something that you've been through that you can share your experience with they can relate to and they can heal through that and it's like it comes full circle where it's actually not a you're not a victim anymore you're more (laughs) you can go keep going it's all good you're healed you know like you're you're we go through these things in life everybody goes through stuff in life and you got to grow through it you got to go through what you grow through what you go through yeah i've always said that <laughs> this is <laughs> boy good listen you're good cool listen. With, you're cool with me leaving all this in here right cuz i i don't i don't care <laughs> yeah. i don't i'm a professional here guys like uh, <laughs> i got to find a better spot no, it's all good. It's all good. I, again, I saw the dogs as soon as we logged on, and I was like, this is going to be an awesome Yeah, we got to stay here. Yeah. Well, it was like, I have the other room, which is like, this is kind of the band rehearsal slash puppy room because he's teething. Um, and then the other room has all of our uh, content creating stuff and like backdrops, but I it also has the stairs where the roommates come up and down, so I didn't want it that to interfere. There is no yeah. quiet place in this house. <laughs> Ro- roommates photobomb in the interview is unacceptable to me. Pets photobomb in the interview yeah. is perfect. So. so then we picked the right room. Yeah. Um, now, do you feel, this is kind of like a question that I'd like to ask artists because, you know, I've always said that art is life in a way and it can grow and it can develop and even eventually die sometimes. Do you prefer if everything you create is a snapshot of who you are at that particular time or do you want maybe the art to sort of grow and develop with you? Yeah, when I write, it's just really what's happening then and there. Um, so it is kind of like a little journal, like, you know, like where you're, your experiences come out, you know, um, and, uh, but they, they come with you and there's moments that I felt finally free and there's moments I definitely didn't feel that, (laughs) you know, um, there's moments I felt like a monster and there's moments that I didn't. And, um, so yeah, it's just, it, it, it does kind of, pinpoint that time in my life and that's why I usually don't go back to old songs and try to recreate them because I'm so far from there mentally and you know as we grow and uh I just don't like I feel like I could do better and more and and maybe take notes from it but I feel like there's always that there's always new material and new inspiration around you I will still, for every time I meet you, bug you to play Is This The Way You Get To Hell Live, just for a throwback, one time, please. <laughs> I love that song, you know? It's a, uh, it's just, we've, we've talked about doing like a medley or something from all of the before we were signed era kind of stuff. Um, maybe, maybe one day, um, we just haven't gotten it together. I know that the guitar player was trying to put something of all, you know, those songs together, Frankenstein and, and all the roots where we were at back then, you know? Yeah, maybe one day, we need to hear it one day. (laughs) Depending on what the lyrical subject matter is, whether it is coming from an internal or external source, is that a different energy writing it or is it a different form of expression or a different emotion that you're channeling into it depending on the material in a way or being that it's still coming from you, the energy is very much the same. Can I say that I love your questions? They're oh. very unique and deep. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, is this way you get to hell? For example, was the very first song we wrote in this band, and 
I had just gotten dropped from a major label as a solo artist, uh, doing kind of like pop stuff, just, I'm not a pop artist. It just kind of happened. That's what they signed me as, is, um, I've always been in bands, but I was like, I really want just some aggression. I want to scream. And is this way you get to hell? It was basically like me saying like, I'm going to do this crazy evil music. <laughs> um, and, uh, but then it turns into more of like me kind of hurting other people because they hurt me, but that's just how it evolved as, as it got written. But it was, is this way you get to hell dripping from bloody fingers? Like this is all my fault. Um, and a lot of times, yeah, that actually resonates still to this day because I feel like sometimes I just destroy everything I touch, but at the same time I can manifest anything I really want. So I guess we all have the power to do either. And if we believe we're going to destroy it, then maybe we will. Um, if we believe that we can manifest it and you want it to happen so bad that you're going to make it happen like a Godsmack tour and Sully singing on a song that happened because I was like, we have to do this. I like, just really, really, really want it. Um, you know, and like this house that I'm in right now wouldn't have happened without manifesting it. But yes, uh, I, I definitely think I haven't changed too astronomically over time. I'm still an artist and a creative and a pain in the ass. <laughs> well, I mean, I think you've grown tremendously because I remember the first time I saw Stitched Apart was on the Lacuna Coil tour uh, in June of 2016. A shout out to Lacuna Coil. That's my all time favorite. Um <laughs> Yep. But then I saw you, you know, play at Webster Hall with Icon for Hire, and then I saw you play with Lacey Sturm, and then Steel Panther, and, you know, like, the, the spectrum went all along the place. So, like, I think in the end you have demonstrated growth and demonstrated also because one big difference, and I think I brought this up um, when I interviewed you last time, but you're also playing guitar on stage I've seen you do before, which I haven't seen you done previously. So I think your means of expression has always grown and developed. Well, thank you. I feel like if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. But um, uh, I uh, I never thought I was good enough guitar player. Hey, come here. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. I'm gonna give him a treat. Hold on. Yeah. I'm not. All right, sit. Come on. <laughs> sit. Good. No. I love this. Now they'll probably calm down for a little while they chew that. But, um, mm. yeah, uh, playing guitar oh, on stage. Yes. So I, you know, I, I played, I got my first guitar at 15 years old and I took lessons and I used to always write with acoustic guitar. And anytime I write songs, I would never be able to play them with people because I was scared to show people the music I was writing at home alone. Like, um, I started forcing myself to go out and play in front of people and for the longest time, but the stuff I would write on guitar was pretty standard, basic kind of stuff. And for this band, I didn't feel like when I first created it, that it was, I was a good enough guitar player to play in this band, but there are some songs that as long as I can use the same guitar, so I don't have to like bring like two on the road. Mm -hmm. If I could keep it in this, like, tunings either transposable or whatever. Same guitar. I can sing and play it at the same time. And there's a, there's some songs that I can do that and some that are necessary that need it. So now there's some songs I cannot play. Like, <laughs> but uh, yet. I was... Yet. Yes, yes. I want to learn one of our new songs that's super heavy that even the guys are just, like, having trouble with. <laughs> but... Uh, I, uh, I just didn't think I was good enough to play in our band. And it wasn't until we were just kind of tired of a revolving door in the rhythm guitar section that I was like, well, I'm just going to play. Yeah. And, we'll, and we got a front of house guy instead of a guitar player. <laughs> and I was, I, I only snuck one song in just in case I was horrible. Cause I just have this, you know, low confidence in that aspect. Cause just there's, I'm around really talented musicians. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I did it and I was like, oh my God, I missed it. But I missed the days that I used to always have a guitar on. Like I never, I hid behind the guitar. That was my safety net. Um, that was my blanket. I, I didn't have to do anything. And then all of a sudden they took the guitar away, like in the way that my path has gone, I didn't play it for a long time. And I was like, I forgot 
like I had to learn how to sing and play or sing without the guitar too. Like, what do you do with all these arms? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you maybe because, you know, there there's plenty of things that a guitar can do that a voice can and vice versa. Do you maybe express different sides of yourself uh, depending on the instrument that you're using or kind of, uh, or is it also expressing the same thing because they're working together in the same song? Oh man, I don't even know. I do know that when I am home and I play guitar, um, it's for me and it's for this like meditative, uh, kind of just a, a peaceful thing. I, I, I think that the guitar is just my, another medium of art that I like. I don't know. I, I, I don't really play it around other people unless I'm on stage, but like, <laughs> It's more just for me to just feel the song, whatever I'm playing, you know, or to remember a song that I used to play all the time, or I don't even usually start a, a song writing it with the guitar anymore, um, just because I feel like we're having so much more fun just doing it in the box. And uh, it just seems to come out better that way, songwriting wise, but I don't know. I think it's uh, it, 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 the guitar is for me. It just happens to be an extra thing on the stage that it's for me to be like happy and, and, and creating and playing. Like, I would love to just take a song and play drums on the whole thing, you know, and just let like our drummer go up and sing or something, you know, cause it's just an instrument. It's an art form. And uh, I don't know, I just really enjoy just playing. And I, I have two more questions for you, and this led me perfectly into the next question because, you know, if you're working on a song for a long period of time, you know, this is between darkness and now, it's almost three years, like, do you feel like the longer you work on something, the harder it is to sort of maintain that initial emotional spark that started the idea? Like, do you kind of like to keep your emotion consistent and feel the same way when you finish a song as you do when you start it? Uh yeah but you know we usually get the meat and potatoes done within the first day um so like as far as like the lyrical content and stuff i usually get like the verse and the chorus done there and i do like to take the bridge uh separately later on just because i feel like it's its own part in it like it's its own little tiny song inside of a song um but uh the the idea is usually there for the chorus immediately. And then I like to tell the story of what the chorus is representing in the verses. So I don't steer too far from the storyline. Um, as far as the musical element, it's, that was a lot of throwing paint on the last record where we didn't know what direction we wanted to take. And we wanted to, we're, we're all about kind of surprising people and shocking people uh, we don't want to give people what they expect us to do, at least at this moment. And also, we don't want to play the same stuff forever. Like, we don't, we don't want to be squished into a genre or anything like that. So we want to be able to create whatever. So the last record, we didn't know what we were doing, and we were just throwing paint everywhere and and seeing what sticked. And that's just what our record was. It's just what ended up coming out. Um, and this one, I do think that we just were more focused. We had like, I had a very, very clear vision. Uh, it's kind of interesting because it started with a few songs and then I created the album art like two years ago. Wow. <laughs> um, and then I started writing songs to uh, match the album art visually in like how I meant the art to be. Um, uh, and so it, it all kind of co coincided together and I kept it very consistent as far as that goes. And you led me perfectly into the final question actually, because, you know, I think Stitch Apart is like a visual experience as much as it is like, I'll never forget, you know, look, I don't think I've seen this happen in person, but like, uh, watching the pictures of what you do when you play, um, Catch Me When I Fall live and how you know you had that uh swan it was literally a swan song that was incredible that's brought a new uh, meaning to crowd surfing but like it seems like stitch up heart is a visual experience with its artwork and everything like that so are you almost like seeing images like is it almost kind of like a synesthetic uh, songwriting process in a way 
Yes, um, it's almost like a movie in my head. Um, I, I visualize being there. Okay, so there's a song on this new record that uh, I wanted to feel like I was a wolf and, and it wasn't to the wolves, but it's a different one that's kind of sticks in the storyline. Um, I wanted to feel like I was a wolf lurking in the forest. And I so I went to a park to write the lyrics while our producer was working with this SoundCloud rapper for the day. And I just like hid in the, in the forest and like wanted to embrace the feeling that it was to be a wolf. I scared a few joggers, but um, and maybe a squirrel or two, but I, I wanted to embrace what it felt like and imagine running through the forest as this wolf at just just out to just get everything and just just you know destroy it and kill and um uh so i do see it visually which is what makes the music video so easy to create because it's already in my head uh artistically um that i don't i mean we we wrote or we did four music videos in the period of five days for this record I had three weeks to come up with these storylines and the visual and the out, like the outfits, the wardrobe, everything was visually what I saw in my head. And I wouldn't let anybody else put their input in except the director that I spoke with literally the day before we actually started shooting it. (laughs) Um, And I was like, okay, well, I got some ideas. He's like, we're good. Don't worry about it. I'm like, okay, well, so I, you know, told the guys what I wanted them to wear. Like I, I did their makeup and everything that I, visually saw the way that I see it and I feel bad because it was kind of like I'm a little bit of a control freak when it comes to that but I was really a control freak in this aspect because I really really saw it and I didn't want it to get convoluted in any way so maybe I should like take some like you know I don't know I I I just I couldn't let anybody else take control over this because I had like so clear a vision that's it's great that you do have a vision, but here, here's one little catch. I kind of want to, this is kind of like my bonus question in a way, because like, um, I've also seen you play at a variety of different venues with a variety of different bands. Like I've seen you play at Gramercy theater numerous times where, you know, there's a barricade and you know, it's a, you know, a very, uh, standard, like live nation sort of venue. But like, I've also seen you play at the studio at Webster hall where there can be as many people on the stage as off the stage in a way. So depending on the venue as well, does that also maybe alter the visual and sonic experience as well? Yeah. Um, I think that kind of hard. There's obviously more room to run around if there's a bigger stage and we can deal with, you can, you know, pull out the big backdrops and stuff like that, but we don't have a lot of production as of now. I'm going to add a little bit more production uh, to make it more just eye candy on the stage with lights and things like that. But but, I mean, we're usually a support band. We don't do a lot of headlining runs. Um, so we don't really have much time to get a lot of stuff on stage and off stage and budget wise. It's just, uh, it's hard to fit the budget with the size of the stage, with the time constraints um, as a support band, which I love doing. I do think that we are gonna do a, a headlining run at some point. We're just, I don't like the pressure, but yeah. Um, I do think this album visually is going to look more cohesive on stage uh, than than any of the others. I can't wait. I'm 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 seeing either pyro or like maybe even video projections as well. I wish we had ten grand every time pyro shot off. Like, <laughs> let's get some fire department in here and get some permits or whatever. I saw Rammstein last year on that big tour and I it was incredible but I just could only imagine how much money one of those shows are like that's insane. So. It's a lot, yeah. I mean, you know, we're not quite there yet, but yet. hopefully yet. this record this record will bring us pyro. Yeah. Definitely. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time and for such an awesome conversation as usual. And thanks for the additional special guests that we had as well. Um, is, there just, <laughs> is there just uh, anything else with a stitch of heart? I love this. This is amazing. Wolfie says, um, I just want to say thank you to other people. And this is the fat wolf that is the 
on stuff behind the record, yeah. kind of. <laughs> you know, it's I, so bullshit. <laughs> I interviewed a. Uh, 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 Heidi from Butcher Babies uh, recently, and her dog was photobombing the whole thing too. So, uh, I, yeah, I actually talked to her before I got a dog because, uh, you know, taking him on tour and stuff, I was like, is it horrible? I was scared to, you know, bring her on tour. Um, and the tour that we ended up doing with the Butcher Babies, uh, it was three, there were three dogs on the tour. There was, so she was like, it was so amazing bringing the dog, get a dog, because it's so, it's like therapeutic. You know, if you have a weird show or something and you go back to the bus and your dog's there just so freaking happy to see you, nothing matters. Yeah. I, I'm wondering why venues don't have dogs for security at this point. It would make people a lot more cooperative at the venue. Right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Um, but I have to – I got a second dog, which now it's a little too many dogs. Um, so we're going to leave him home. It's probably safer home yeah. anyway better off you know i totally understand is there just uh, anything else though with stitched apart that you'd like to promote uh for uh this new when can we be expecting the new album if you're allowed to say of course and anything anything that you're allowed to talk about that you'd like to promote the record is coming out this year um i don't i can't say a date yet but there's uh going to be like i said four music videos leading up to it and in we will be on tour we're going out with escape the fate um drugs point north and garzy and uh yeah it's gonna be an awesome tour i'm really excited about it but hopefully by then you guys will have some music you gotta bring is this the way you get to hell back for that tour if there's any tour oh. to bring that one back on it's that one 25 minute set play your song from 2010 <laughs> hey, you never know. It's quick and to the point. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody, Mixie of Stitched Apart. New stuff coming very soon. In the meantime, check out their new single, To the Wolves. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.